All right, guys, so we're going to be doing another Earthlings Weekly Pet Answers today. And I'll be doing these about once a week, but I'm not going to set a certain day. I'm not going to say I'm going to do it every Monday or every Friday. It's just going to happen about once a week. And, you know, I'll do it on the day that I have time to do it. So we're going to be doing the second one today. And I'm going to go through the comments from the bottom up. And uh, anything I see that's a question that I can answer here, I will. There's some, you know, random comments here that aren't even questions. Um, like one guy said, the flying turtle said, hi, I'm new to your channel. Can you show all your pets? Because I'm new to your channel. Uh, someone wrote, why did the chicken cross the road? Mr. Soccer, one, two, three, win. I don't know why the chicken crossed the road. <laughs> um, all right, so let me go up and find some uh, comments that I can answer here. Uh, what was your first reptile? You know, when I was really little, probably five, uh, I know we had garter snakes and had salamanders back then as well. Um, had all types of pets when I was a kid. Uh, when I was less than 10 years old, I had had fish, reptiles, amphibians, hamsters, you know, a lot of different pets, birds. I had a parakeet when I was little. Um, let's see. When do you do these vids? Daily, weekly, monthly? I think I just kind of explained that in the beginning. They'll be about once a week, but it's just going to be about once a week. It's not a set day. Um, and that was by Karen Lee. Uh, Shock Engine Plus, I love your videos, they're so helpful. Well, thank you. Keep trying to put out good stuff. Uh, do you have a guinea pig and how could, how big should their cage be? I don't have a guinea pig, but their cage should be basically as big as you can get it. A one layer cage. Uh, they do not need multiple levels, they can fall. So you're going to want a one level cage, and I'd say like at least four square feet, two feet by two feet, but it should be bigger than that really. I think that's pretty much the minimum. That's also for kind of a hedgehog, the minimum four square feet. But bigger is better. Single layer cage, as big as you can get, is really the best answer you can get there. The biggest cage you can get of, of you know, a single layer is what you want. Um, that was by Wolfie Boogeyman. Um, Kenzie K says, I'm interested in getting a ferret, but I'm only 13. Is that too young to get a ferret? Because I want to train it not to bite me, but I'm worried I may mishandle it. You know, it's never too young to get a pet. As I just said, I had lots of pets when I was young. But lots of pets can live a long time. Like, hamsters and such are great for kids because they only live a couple years. Um, a ferret, though, it can live over 10 years. There's other things like birds live a long time. Turtles can live a long time. So there's nothing wrong with getting it as a kid, but you just got to realize your parents are probably going to have to help you take care of it. So your parents have to be on board with uh, getting the animal. And you're also going to have to realize when you go to college, when you move houses, you know, you're probably going to want to take these pets with you, or you're going to have to, unless your parents are going to keep them. So it's a long thing. It's not something you're going to have, you know, for the next year. You, if you're 13 and you get a ferret, you could have them until you're 25 or more, you know. So it's just something you got to think about if you really want to have it that long. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting it when you're 13. Just make sure your parents are on board and they'll help kind of, you know, with the research and keeping track of what you should be doing. Um... Robert Norris says, hi again, one last question, my hedgehog is four months old but weighs 387 grams, is this too big, should she lose weight? I currently off the top of my head don't know how much they should weigh at four months, so I don't have a great answer for this, but I haven't worried too much about hedgehogs, if, as long as they don't look like they're turning into a humongous, you know, blob, it's usually not a problem, just make sure that they seem to be staying of a healthy weight. And, you know, if, if you want to go look online at what weight they should be at that month, that's fine. But I've never really done anything that technical. I just watch them and make sure, you know, feed them more or less depending on how they visually look. Um, let's see. Kaylee Haley, what do you feed piranhas? I actually raised and sold piranhas when I was in college for about a year. And um, all you feed them is... Bloodworms are great. They'll grow fast on bloodworms. You get those little frozen bloodworm gumdrops. For small piranhas, those are great. You can feed them live fish. Um, I'd suggest rosy reds over goldfish. Goldfish are really fatty. They're not the most nutritious. You can feed them some other fish, but bloodworms, there's some frozen shrimps and such. Almost any meaty food piranhas will eat, and bloodworms are one of the best. They will go after those, especially the small piranhas when you get them when they're small. They'll go after those, and it'll help them grow pretty quick. All right. Jason Stein says, I cannot get my bearded dragon to drink. I've tried everything. I don't know if he's dehydrated. I've had my dragon for 
over five years and they don't really drink that much. It's good to always leave a water bowl in their cage and sometimes they'll drink. And also, I will spray my dragon with a mister, and the water that gets on his face, you'll see him licking it up sometimes, so they'll get some water from that. But they'll get a lot of their water also from the vegetables they eat, even the insects they eat are high in moisture. So, don't worry too much if, if, then, you, know, if you don't see them drinking every day, because I barely see mine drink ever myself. So, it's nothing to worry about, just leave a clean water bowl in there all the time and, you know, feed good foods. Uh, Reefer for Life asked if I've ever kept a crested gecko. Yeah, I've had them. I've got some videos on my channel about crested geckos. You can look them up. Um, but I've kept them before. Um, Matthew Miller, any, do you have any information on rats? If they make good pets, where's the best place to purchase them? Rats are actually really great pets. They're very smart. They can make amazing pets. Um, where to get them, you know, it really doesn't matter. You can get them from almost anywhere. Try to get one that's still small, not fully grown adults, so it kind of grows up. And they can really bond with their owners, and they live a while. And, you know, they're actually really good pets. Um, I'd say go for it. If you want a rat, go for it. Just try to get them when they're old enough that they're eating on their own and everything, but they're not fully grown yet. Um, Jake Grogan, will you ever stop YouTube? No. Not as long as it's around and working, you know, if, if YouTube just goes away or something, of course, I won't be able to anymore, but as long as it's working as it is, I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, Logan Creason says, what's the general cost of getting fair, getting your ferret shots, food, cage supplies, etc.? Ferrets can be pretty expensive, vet bills can be, you know, if it's just a standard non-sick, you're just bringing them once a year, a couple hundred bucks, um, but if they're sick, it could be more. The cage, the food, the supplies, I mean, and the ferret. Ferret's going to be anywhere from 80 to 150. The cage is probably going to be a couple hundred bucks as well because they need a nice big cage. So 150, 200, maybe even more for a cage. Food's not bad. You know, it's it's like feeding a small cat. It's it's not too bad, the food. You know, you spend, I don't know, 20 bucks a month, maybe more. And then you're going to need supplies, litter pan, litter, you know. It's going to add up. Just to get a ferret, let's say for one year, with the cage, the vet bill, everything, I mean, it could be seven fifty, or maybe even more than that, with all those things combined. Um, let's see. Dog Soldiers says he has a question about hedgehogs. I found a video on YouTube where a hedgehog is screaming really loud. Is that self-defense or what? I'm not sure what you mean by screaming, but they'll hiss and they'll kind of cluck and make this clicking noise. And that's usually a nervous, scared, or kind of fending off... Um, if they think they're being, you know, if they don't feel safe. So it's usually like, uh, and I don't feel safe, so I'm curling in a ball and making these noises to try to scare away whoever's near me. All right, Alex Collins says he has a question about crickets. One, do you breed your own crickets, and is there any special thing to do to get them to breed? And yes, I have bred my own crickets. Um, you should search my channel for cricket breeding and you'll find some videos. I've done a few videos on cricket breeding. I don't do it so much all the time. I'm not doing it currently, but I've done it in the past, and it's actually really easy to do. So take a look at those videos, and there's other videos online to check out as well. All right. Sparklinger says, family's remodeling, and I have cockatiel, and there's some dust around the house. Um, should I keep them outside? You know, if, you, if you're living in the house, and the dust isn't hurting you, Bird might be okay. Try to keep them in a closed off room. Maybe if you have an air filter, put an air filter in there. If it's nice outside, a proper temperature for your bird, sure, you can put them outside. But just make sure that either, you know, keep a good eye on them. You don't want them getting away. You know, it's always kind of scary having a bird outside, even in a cage. If they get out, they could be gone. Um, so just keep an eye on them. If you think uh, your cage is secure or and or the wings are clipped, um, yeah, you could put them outside for a little while. Of course, I wouldn't leave them outside at night when you're sleeping or anything like that. All right. Reptibian says, how long can cold-blooded reptiles last on a road trip? That's kind of hard to say. I don't, it depends how long your road trip is. I mean, are you talking about a two-week road trip or, you know, just like driving eight hours once to get to your destination? Maybe you're moving or something. Uh, you know, and reptiles can live for a couple days but you should still keep them at fairly proper temperatures. You can get little heat packs, those one-time use ones, those instant hand warmers or foot warmers. Throw one of those, you know, in their cage or under their cage uh, to try to cut, you know, keep the temperature right. 
you know, they'll be okay for a day or two, but you still want to keep them at a near proper temperature. You can't, like, have them at 40 degrees and expect them to live. So, I mean, a road trip, if you got your car, it's 75 degrees in the car, and you put a little heat, instant heat pad in their cage, they should be fine on a, a road trip for a few hours, but not, a, like, a two-week road trip. Like, you know, a, a one-day road trip, they'd be fine. Uh, XO Far The Milk OX. I'm not sure what exact the name is there. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Do I need to cut my hedgehog nails? Again, I have a video on that. Look up on my channel, Hedgehog Nail Cutting, or Hedgehog Nails, and you should find that video. I find you don't really have to all that much. There's some hedgehogs I haven't cut their nails in a year, and they're fine. Um, but if they're getting long, you can cut them, and it depends how nice your hedgehog is. Mine was nice. It was real easy to do, but, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about it, but yes, you should cut them if they're getting long. Um, SK4869 says, oh my god. 80 comments. Yeah, there's like 150 now. You have more, your work cut out for you. Yeah, I got a lot of comments to answer, so this might be a little bit of a long video. But we're going, trying to skip through and, you know, get the ones that are quick and easy to answer here, too, because I don't want it to be too long a video. A video. Rami Ab Abd says, the best for a snake. You know, again, I never think of beginner animals really as beginner animals. You should get an animal that you want, that you're going to be happy caring for, and that you research, figure out how to care for it, set up the tank correctly, learn what you need to do to care for it, and then get the pet that you want. The best first snake or best beginner snake, you know, there's lots of snakes out there. There's corn snakes. There's, um, I had a Florida Bannock water snake that was fun, but that's kind of a different type of snake. There's small, like, boas, sand boas. There's lots of good snakes out there, but they're still long-living creatures that you shouldn't just get because, oh, it's a starter. You should look up and get the one you want, but learn everything about them before you get them. Oh, let's see. Jordan Hakes asks, what are some things I could do to bond with my hedgehog? Just take them out of the cage every day. Try to play with them every day. Give them treats while they're out of the cage. I've seen some hedgehogs that act like a dog and they'll play tug of war with like a little string or something. Um, but just take them out of the cage, give them treats out of the cage, and stuff like that. And pretty much all you can do is just hang out with them. Din Bekovic. My leopard gecko swims in, in her water dish. Is it, too, is it not too hot in her cage? I think you meant is it too hot in her cage. Uh, leopard geckos will go in water sometimes. Uh, it helps shedding, or just, just randomly they'll do it. But the fact that you said, is it too hot in your cage, I don't know. You have to test your temperature. You should have a thermometer in there, and you should be testing to make sure it's of the proper temperature for your leopard gecko. So if you don't know what the temperature is, you need to find out. You need to have a thermometer in there. It's like fish tanks, reptile tanks. You can't just throw a light on there or a heater in there and say, oh, it's good. You need to test it. So get a thermometer, test it out, see what you're at, and adjust if you need to. Team Ender says, Kenyan Sandboas, how long do they get? My mom says I can get one if I blah, 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 blah. I have a 15 by 15 long space. 15 by 15, it's, eh, it's not much smaller than a 10-gallon tank, but that's kind of small even for one, uh, one of those uh, Kenyan Sandboas. They don't get that big. I, I'd say 2, 3 feet. Like, they really don't get that big. But 15 by 15 is still pretty small for them. Uh, Mason Meow says, I have a UVB lamp, but my turtle shell still peels. There's a lot of algae growth because they trap water, so I scrubbed them with a toothbrush. All right, about UVBs, the lights, you know, only last about six months. You get a UVB light, it stops giving off enough UVB after like six months, even though it's going to keep giving light. It might not be burned out, but the UVB part of it only works for about six months, so you need to replace that light every six to nine months. So that could be one problem. And you say you got a lot of algae in your tank. That's not only from the light, but that's from your water quality in your tank. You got a lot of phosphates and nitrates in there, allowing all this algae to grow. You should be doing water changes about every week or two of about 25%. Uh, you might need to do more than that now, but don't ever empty and fill the tank, fill the tank completely. You should watch my videos on um, biocycling and the nitrogen and ammonia cycle. But that could be caused from an old UVB light not providing proper UVB anymore and it could be caused from poor water quality. Um, 
turtles, just like fish, need good water quality, and the fact that you have tons of algae lets me know that there's a lot of phosphates and, nit and nitrates in there. So you should be doing water changes and checking your water quality because it, it could be either of those two things that's causing the shell to be getting damaged. Uh, Maddie Rabe says, my beardy won't eat any greens. I've tried everything. Um, she won't eat it even if I put a roach or cricket in it. What can I do? She does eat bell peppers, only as a hand treat. Well, I don't know how big or old your dragon is, but they'll eat more and more as they get older. So if your dragon is still young, they eat mostly insects, and they switch over to eating mostly vegetables as they get older. So I'm not sure how old your dragon is, you didn't specify, but just keep offering them different types of vegetables. Try kale, mustard greens, collard greens, there's tons of them out there. And just keep trying, keep offering, and as the dragon gets older and grows bigger, it'll start eating more and more. Cameron Howard asks, what's my favorite pet, mammal, or pet? And I really don't have a favorite pet because they're all different. You know, every pet is different in their own way. I really can't pick one as a favorite. Um, Simple Chloe says, my hedgehog has been with my, my for three-ish hours. She keeps licking her lips and I don't think she has eaten. I need an answer because I'm worried. I don't think you should worry about it licking its lips. Maybe it had some food on there. I don't, I don't think licking its lips is probably anything to worry about. And she also asks, how often should I feel meal, mealworms? As often as you want. Uh, hedgehogs eat insects a lot in the wild, so um, you can feed in as many as pretty much they'll eat. I mean, you don't want to overfeed them, but you can feed them a couple every day. She asks well, another question up here. Um, my hedgehog refuses to use her wheel when it's in her cage, but when it's in her playpen, she jumps right on it. Is this normal? Yeah, I mean, animals have weird behaviors. Maybe she is out of the cage, she sees the wheel, she wants to run at it. I don't know, but it's, it's again, nothing to worry about. It's just a, what she wants to do. Uh, Reggae Shark asked, do hedgehogs like getting their quills pet? Um, you know, I've got hedgehogs that keep their quills down, they're really calm hedgehogs, and yeah, they'll let me pet them. I don't know if they like it or not. It's not like a cat that's like, oh yeah, I like being pet, and like comes back for more. Um, they kind of just are, they don't react to it really, at least mine doesn't. Some will get mad and puff up if you touch them, but I, I don't know, I don't really, I don't think they dislike it, but it's not like a cat that's like, yeah, pet me more, you know. All right, well, I think I went through almost all of them here. I did skip over one or two, so I'm looking back. Here's one more. Lay Ford says, would you recommend live plants in your fish tank? Why am I not? And if so, is there any particular you recommend? Um, and then, then she's talking about having fire belly toads. Uh, fire belly toads and if she should add plants to their 20-gallon lung. You know, plants are great. Um, they do help filter the water. They help take nitrates and phosphates out. They'll sometimes help keep your... Uh, uh, algae level down, but you can do the same with water changes. I've had plants in the past and it is fun and they are good, but you need good lighting and you also, if they grow well, if you have good lighting they're growing well, they sometimes will grow really fast and you need to go in there and trim them and you'll be trimming them every couple of weeks and it's just more maintenance and sometimes they'll just not do well in your tank and sometimes they'll die and in, in which case they're putting a lot more ammonia into the water and it's just a pain. So I found, yes, they're good, but for me, I haven't really, after I tried them a few times, I've kind of stopped because it's just more work and, you know, it's just basically just more work. I'd rather just do water changes, but um, yeah, it's good to do. If you want to try it out, go ahead and give it a try. It is healthy for the tank, so there's nothing wrong with it, and yeah, give it a try if you want to. All right. I think that's good. If I missed your question, I'm sorry. There's a lot here, so I've been you know, going through and trying to get them. If I missed your question, I'm sorry. Leave another comment on this video right now, and I will do another Answers Weekly next week, and hopefully I'll get to your question if I missed it this time. But, uh, yeah, go ahead and leave comments here, leave more questions here, and we'll see you all next week. So, happy pet keeping, and have a good day, everyone.